Hey, what's up everyone? It's Dom, the Tastemaker. And it's been a minute since I've actually sat down and had a conversation with you guys, but I told myself I'm not going to I'm not going to post anything else until I sit down and talk to my girls. Like I need to talk to y'all. I need to update y'all on my life. I know you guys saw a vlog um, maybe a couple of weeks ago and I was like a little snippets here and there you guys got to see you know a little bit of what was going on you guys also found out that I was like looking for a new apartment I was searching for new homes and you guys saw that I was doing photo shoots and a lot of you know miscellaneous different things um, but there's been a lot of changes in my life and just this past weekend I did like a huge decluttering of my home like I cleaned everything I got rid of so much stuff I got I just let go I had to just I, I literally was sitting on the edge of my bed I looked around my room and then I was like I gotta clean up and I gotta do like a deep clean. I'm not talking about wiping the surfaces down, making sure things aren't dusty. I'm not talking about just sweeping the floors. I'm talking about going through everything and getting rid of things. Like I cleared out my junk drawers. I threw away a bunch of stuff that I was just like not using anymore. And it's very like interesting because after I finished cleaning everything up, I like, I was just looking around and I was just like, oh my God, it just feels so much better. Like there's nothing better than a clean house, but it's nothing better than like an organized, categorized clean house. I'm talking about, I was, I was color coding stuff, like really, really organizing and decluttering and it really felt good. But it was also very reminiscent of uh, what I've been dealing with this past year or maybe few years, honestly, and that is letting go knowing when to let go of old things that are just not good for you anymore. We oftentimes, we just like to hold on to stuff. But yeah, Erica Badu has a song called Bag Lady. And that song is all about letting go of your of your own baggage. And we all have baggage. We all have something that we just cannot let go of. That can be places, habits, people. It can literally be anything. And I've changed a lot of things about myself. There's a lot of things that I just don't do anymore. I'm very disciplined and I'm constantly changing. I'm still changing. You know, there's always room for growth. As I'm sure you guys probably know by now, I am a single woman. So you guys know that uh, the first thing that I let go was a toxic relationship. And many of us are in toxic relationships that we just can't seem to get out of, or at least we tell ourselves that we can't get out of them for whatever reason. I'm, I'm sure you're gonna you know, find a million excuses as to why you can't let someone go. But I promise you, if you have anyone in your life right now that is not healthy for you, you know, you gotta be honest with yourself. Is this person serving me in a positive way? Are they helping me develop into a better me? If they are not, if they are causing you problems, if they're being toxic, if they're just bringing drama into your life, you need to let them go. That goes for family, friends, significant others. That goes for your job. If you're working a job where you're miserable there and you can't stand it and it's literally affecting your physical health, you need to let that job go. A couple of years, um, not even a couple of years. Wow, it's been a really long time, actually. Um, some years back, we'll say that. Some years back, when I was still working, you know, my nine to five job, I would say this is probably around like 2013, 2013 to about 2017. I was working at a commercial real estate company and I helped with accounts receivable. I did reception and I also helped with office tours. So basically what a commercial real estate company is, is a, a real estate company that specializes in office spaces. That particular location that I worked at was in Beverly Hills. I worked off of Camden Drive in the Wells Fargo Bank building, okay, on the sixth floor, baby. And um, that job, I was miserable there. I was so miserable and you can tell like every part of my life was affected. And I don't know if it was just, you know, the relationship that I had at that time or if it was the job. It was just a really, really bad energy that was just surrounding me, I feel like. And when I was working at this job, you know, the only reason why I mentioned that I was in Beverly Hills is because I want you guys to kind of put yourself in that place and think about the people that would be in that environment. And the people that I had to encounter and deal with on a daily basis, there was a lot of entitlement, a lot of you better do what I asked you to do. 
and you better do it now and you better do it the way that I told you to do it you know like all of that type of shit right I was having a lot of conflict with my co-workers mind you this job that I worked it was like all women like that was it only women so that definitely had an effect on me as well because dealing with women is very difficult for me I feel like a lot of women can be very catty they can just be uh, fucking irritating dealing with other women sometimes is just a lot it's a lot to deal with and when you put too many females together there's obviously going to be tension in the office but yeah so when i was working this job though everything about the job was miserable for me the job was affecting me so much that i started to have anxiety attacks at work and the first time that it happened um, I was really, really freaking out and I thought that I was about to have a heart attack or something. I was having sharp pains in my chest. So I'm thinking like, oh my God, like, am I about to have a heart attack? And what it really was, was stress. I went to the doctor. I literally had to go to the doctor, you guys. And this is what I'm talking about. You have to protect your peace. You have to protect your vibe, your energy. You have to, you know, allowing those people at that job to just like get the best of me and you know, I was also the only black girl that was working there. So that also plays a role. And oftentimes we are perceived to be the aggressors in situations, even when we're not. They were really making me seem like I was just like a problem. One time I had got, I literally had to have a meeting, which I hated so much when we have to have a meeting and we have to have a talk and sit down. And I remember one time they called me into the office because basically, and there was somebody who had came in and they had a package that came into the office and it was like a really, really big box, right? And we had a mail room. That's where all the packages and the mail go, right? When we were about to close the office, someone had called in and said, hey, can you leave my package outside of the door? The package was like a really big, heavy package. Me personally, I'm not moving no heavy package for you. FedEx or whoever brought that in, they had a dolly when they brought it in. I'm not finna start trying to push it out the door for you because you can't get there on time. So they wanted me to leave their box outside of the door. I did not do that, right? So because I did not do that, the next morning, that person wrote an email to my manager and was complaining about me. And that's where I say that like that entitlement thing comes from because you're trying to have me do something, one, that we don't do. We don't leave packages outside of the door because somebody can easily just steal your package and then we're gonna be held responsible for that. And for two, I'm not finna hurt myself trying to move a big ass box for you. They wrote an email to my manager. Long story short, we ended up having a meeting about that. I got in trouble because of that. So that happened and it was so many other things, but I'm just trying to give you guys an example of like the very small things that I would get like called into the office for and this was like all the time for four years right that I was just like dealing with this and one day I just couldn't take it anymore and so deuces but the point of me bringing that up was is was the fact that I was working there for so long and dealing with so much like petty drama and things like that to the point where it started to affect my physical health because that job was literally stressing me out and if you don't let go of things when you need to let them go I promise you you're gonna feel that pain you're going to understand why you should have let it go and you're gonna be telling yourself oh my god I should have stopped messing with such and such or I should have stopped doing this or whatever whenever you get that feeling see what people don't realize is that every last one of us every last one of us we all have intuition we're all intuitive we all have an inner knowing of things we all have that little whisper in our ear not necessarily but you have these thoughts that pop up in your head out of nowhere and you just have an inner knowing when you need to like stop doing certain things even with people you know like dealing with certain relationships when you don't let them go you'll start to see how those relationships affect you in a negative way but yeah I, I have even cut family members off before because they just weren't serving me in a positive way I don't want to get into the details about you you know all the things that they did to me and woe is me because this is not a pity party session here but I just want to let you guys know to what extent I'm willing to go to protect my inner peace to protect my happiness to make sure that I am okay mentally your mental health is so important and your mind is the most important thing that you need to make sure that you protect I mean everything starts in the mind 
everything starts in the mind. When you see people looking good or you see people that have a really nice body that they earned, it's a mindset. It's all in your mind. You know, they're able to do those things not because they're lucky, but because they are determined to make something happen for themselves. A lot of people sit around and they wait for life to happen to them. You think that everything is supposed to fall into your lap and everything's just gonna, one day it's all just gonna work out. And that's not how life works. One day you have to decide that today is the day that I'm gonna make those necessary changes that I need to make. And be honest with yourself about what you need to change about yourself. A lot of people, we like to just talk about how great we are and we think we're so perfect and you're not, you're not perfect. You're not, I'm not perfect, you're not perfect. We all have flaws. And when you're able to like swallow your pride, get your ego in check and be and be real with yourself. If you can't be real with yourself, you can't be real with anybody in this world. You have to start with you. It starts with the person in the mirror okay so you want to make sure that you're honest with yourself about the negative habits that you have because we all have habits they can be good or they can be bad but you have to be honest with yourself about the negative habits that you have and how they're holding you back from where you want to be if you stop doing x y and z you can finally get to that place you want to be at but if you are holding on to old habits and old ways you can't go into your new life with that old sh in in the way like god is not even going to bless you with what he wants to give you until you let that old sh stuff go there's a picture and i'm pretty sure a lot of you guys have seen this picture there's like a little meme picture it's a little girl and she has a teddy bear in her hand and it's a little little teddy bear it's a little cute little teddy bear and there's a picture of jesus and he's sitting like and he's kneeling down to her and behind his back, he has a really, really big teddy bear. Like the teddy bear is huge, right? But the little girl says, you know, well, I don't want to let go of my teddy bear. I like my teddy bear. And God is trying to convince her, like, if you let that little teddy bear go, I got this big one waiting for you right here. That whole metaphor, I don't know if I explained that right, because sometimes I'm like, it, it's difficult for me. Sometimes it's difficult for me to like explain things, but hopefully you guys kind of get what I'm getting with that. You have to let go of the smosh that you think is amazing so that you can get something greater later. But you have to be willing to do what? Let go. Let go. Just let go. And l allow life to flow. You know, feel the energy of something. If something feels bad, it's usually bad. Um, a lot of you guys have seen changes in me. You guys see that I obviously look different. And the reason why I look the way that I look is because I changed my state of mind there's different choices and new habits that i have that allow me to have these changes my bad habit was coffee i replaced that with tea but the thing about it is a lot of companies will tell you that coffee has a lot of benefits but it i don't find the benefit in drinking coffee i really don't when i was drinking coffee as much as i was drinking coffee i would literally get migraines and caffeine withdrawals and my eye would twitch, literally my eye would twitch uncontrollably. I would get migraines if I didn't drink coffee. And so I would drink coffee any time of the day. And people would be like, damn, it's, it's nine o'clock. You drinking coffee at night? Like, why are you drinking coffee tonight? The reason why I had to do that was because I was trying not to drink the coffee and I would wait to the end of the day and then it'd be like, dang, now I got a migraine. So now I have to get the caffeine to get rid of the migraine. Because those caffeine withdrawal migraines, if anybody has ever had them, it's not something that you can just take a pill and then you're just gonna get better like it's one of those things that last but what I replace with the coffee is tea tea has so many great different benefits there's so many different varieties and flavors of teas and I like to get like loose leaf tea there's actually a shop that I wanted to go to so I might bring you guys along with me in a vlog but um loose leaf teas are really really great for you but if you literally just drink any hot tea in the morning it's going to get your digestive system going especially with that ginger and that lemon in there it's really really great for your digestive system so you're able to pass a bowel movement so yeah definitely drinking the ginger tea and the ginger lemon teas in the mornings instead of drinking coffee now coffee they'll literally tell you all these different benefits that coffee has and honestly i can let you guys know that coffee is the worst thing 
for you to start drinking. If you don't drink coffee, don't start. Don't let these Instagrammers and stuff and these influencers influence you into going to Starbucks every day and spending $6 on a cup of coffee. Do not do that to yourself. The other reason why I stopped drinking coffee is that it started to affect the enamel on my teeth. It was starting to like thin the enamel out to the point where it was like certain parts of my teeth I can like see through. It was like clear. And it caused like one, and because of that, I was losing enamel in my teeth and it caused like one of my teeth to like slightly chip, not a lot, but a little bit, a little bit of my tooth, like it chipped. So that was another reason why I had to stop drinking the coffee. Cause if you think about it, you're like, when you drink coffee, all these are here in the front, all these teeth here, those are the ones that are being affected the most. So you just want to be mindful of that. You know, I was realizing there was a lot of things that I I just, you know, I really needed to work on. And there are certain boundaries that you have to set. And I would oftentimes pretty much just be a people pleaser, you know, just doing things that made other people happy. I always considered how what I did affected somebody else. And I cared about how what I was doing made somebody else feel like, you know, it was just all these different things that I was too busy trying to please other people that I forgot about myself. I forgot that I I needed to be pleased too. It wasn't only about making sure that he was happy, she was happy, they were happy. It was more important that I was happy. And when I started focusing more on my happiness, that's when I really started letting a lot of things and people go because I was like, you're, you're, you're something ain't right with you. Like, I don't know what it is, but I can't fuck with you no more. Like I can't, I can't rock with you. So let go of their relationship had a friendship um, that, you know, I was friends with somebody for a very, very long time. And I know she probably still watches my channel. So if you're watching this, you know, I'm not going to put the whole situation on blast. No worries. But, you know, we ended up, you know, falling out and I had to let go of that friendship. And that was somebody I was friends with for half of my life. Literally, like so I was friends with this person since I was like 14 years old. Yeah, so uh, yeah, that was a relationship that I had to let go of. You know, how can you let go of someone you've been friends with for so long and all this stuff? But at this point in time in my life, you guys, I'm just focused on this girl right here, me. I'm focused on me and I'm focused on what's best for me. And if you're in my life and I feel like you're starting to affect me in a negative way, I just can't rock with it. Or if I feel something is off, like I just have to like let that go, allow you to deal with whatever you're dealing with. And then later on, we can come back and we can try to work something out. But that was very difficult for me. And um, honestly, once again, I just focused on things that made me happy. And I was like, Whatever those things might be, you know, I definitely got deeper into my spirituality. Um, you know, when you go through dark times, you get closer to God. At least I do. I don't know about you. But when I go through dark moments, I separate from the world and it's just me and God. And I'm that's it. You know, um, I, I started meditating. You know, I started, you know, just eating better, do, making better decisions, caring more about my health caring more about just everything and um I felt like the the last little thing that I really needed to do was like just declutter my space and let go of things in my space I had let go of people I had let go of bad habits I had let go of so many things but the last thing that I needed to let go of was actual things that I had so I still actually I still feel like I need to still go through and like look through some other things and like get rid of some stuff but when you get rid of the past then you allow room for new things to come in. So I let go of that toxic relationship. Now I have room for a healthy relationship, one with healthier boundaries, with someone who respects me on a higher level. You know, friendships, you know, I will have greater friendships in the future. Maybe I'll have more friends, maybe not. If I can be honest with you guys though, I am a loner and I really, really enjoy it. And I know a lot of people don't understand that, especially in a world where, you know, everybody is so focused on social media and having friends. And speaking of this, I wanted to talk about this real quick. There was an influencer uh, around, I would say, towards the end of last year, not the beginning of the, this year, but the end of last year, right? I had met this influencer and she's a really, really popular girl, like super popular. I, I don't like name dropping and doing all of that, but she's a very, very popular influencer that I'm sure a lot of you guys know. She wanted to hang out with me 
but she I felt like she wanted to hang out with me because of my look and how I looked and I don't like those kinds of friendships you know a lot of people have fake ass friends and that shit is weird to me like I don't want to be friends with somebody because they're pretty you know what I mean? Just because you're pretty, it doesn't mean that you're a good person. It doesn't mean that you're a good friend. Like, I'd rather have an ugly friend that's, like, a great friend than have a pretty asshole. Like, I just, I don't want to, I don't want to do, you know what I mean? Like, that's just very fake to me. It's like, don't you want to, like, fill me out first and, like, get to know me a little bit better before you're just like, oh, let's hang out. Like, she just, like, met me and she's like, oh, you want to go out to the club? I'm like, go out to the club. And I was like, oh, uh, well, I have to work. So I won't be able to go. I don't want to, I don't want people to be friends with me because I'm a look, you know, like an accessory of sorts. And you notice that a lot with girls today. A lot of girls are like, oh, she's pretty. I want to be friends with her. I wonder if she wants to be friends. Like I had seen a video like that on TikTok of this girl. She's like, oh, she's pretty. I wonder if she wants to be friends. I should have said something. I'm like, what? I don't want to be friends with a girl because she's pretty. She probably a grimy ass. You know what I mean? Like what? What is? What? Like this is a this new age of people. You guys are cut from a different cloth. Like I'm from the '90s. I'm a '90s baby, and I'm talking about a true '90s baby. I'm not these new what, it, what they call it generational Generation Z, whatever the younger crowd is. Niggas that be doing a hip dance and shit on TikTok. Y'all are different. That's all I gotta say. It's just a different time. And even that is like difficult for me. When it comes to social media, that's another thing I wanted to talk about. I took at least like a year break from social media. And even now, I would say it's going on like two years now, but I have taken a serious break from social media. I am not the girl that you're going to see posting on social media every day. If you follow me on Instagram, I'm like a shooting star. It's like, if you catch me, you catch me. I'm in and out. I post on random days. I'm not one of those people that you can like Insta stalk online. I'm not someone who like posts my everyday life on social media. I literally do not care about Instagram. If I was not an influencer, like I just would completely delete Instagram altogether. I'm definitely a TikTok TikTok kind of girl you can definitely check your girl out on TikTok because that's where I be at I like TikTok TikTok is like just a different world and there's just like people have this perception of TikTok I once had a perception of TikTok I thought it was just like something for kids I thought it was just like an app where people just dance on there and stuff but it's actually just like a world of like life hacks you know they have the spirituality going on on there you know, people are always posting funny content. And like Instagram is like, to me, turning into Facebook. Like, remember when Instagram came out, like, and you like got rid of your Facebook account? And it's interesting because Facebook bought Instagram. Mm, that's interesting. But yeah, like, I don't know. It's just like one of those things where it's like, especially if you're like somebody who's constantly on tiktok you'll notice like you'll see something on tiktok and then it's posted on instagram and it's just like i guess like y'all could have just really went to tiktok and then they post it on instagram reels and people are like oh i don't be on tiktok but i watch instagram reels i'm like then you might as well be on tiktok like i don't like that people would be trying to like crap on tiktok because it's like oh it's for kids or whatever but anyway back to the social media thing um, a lot of people are constantly, constantly posting their everyday life on social media. And if that's something that interests you, hey, so be it. But me personally, I'm just not that kind of person. I don't really care to do it. And I felt so good. I finally let go of the need to always be seen. To always let people know like every little thing I'm doing or try to like stunt and show, oh, look what I did. Look what I bought. Look where I'm at. Blah, blah, blah. And it's like I notice a lot of the times too even when you're trying to enjoy something, you're constantly enjoying your life through a lens. You're constantly looking at a phone screen and you're just looking into this phone screen and you're just looking down and you're looking down into nothing. There was this video that I saw on Instagram the other day and it was so, so like moving. I'm going to post it on or I'm going to post it right here for you guys to see. But there's like this video of this guy and he's like chasing a dollar. And then there is a clip where like all of these people are on their phones, not paying attention and they're walking into a ditch. 
and then it's just like it constantly goes on but just watch the video and i thought that was very interesting too because even like as i walk my dog i notice people are just constantly into their phone like damn when i go on a walk for my dog i don't even like to bring my phone i only bring my phone now for like safety reasons because i told my sister like i told her like oh i don't bring my phone when i walk I, when i walk him i just i just go for a walk i like to like get away from my phone for a minute she was like that is so dangerous anything can happen to you you really need to keep your phone on you so i was like all right fine so now i bring it but i don't like to like sit there the whole time like this and just like not being in the moment like look around you pay attention look at the like feel nature like i'm also somebody that's like really into nature and I just like to breathe in the fresh air outside like and just enjoy the moment. I don't need to be looking into a phone screen. And it's just like pay attention to your world. Like people are just so tuned into their phone. It's like you're on vacation and it's like the entire time you're just like this. You're at the club and the entire time you're like this. You're at a funeral. People be at funerals, bro, on their phone recording the funeral. I'm like, oh my God, when does it stop? When do you feel like you need to put that phone away? When do you feel like you can like just not record something? It's crazy. It's crazy. The, 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 the need to constantly just record the moment instead of being in the moment and creating memories of your own. It's one thing if you want to, you know, take a quick pic real quick of something, but learn how to like just be in the moment and not try to capture the moment all the time. You know, on occasion, I pop out and I'll post a picture or I'll pop out and I'll be on Instagram story sharing a portion of my life if I find it to be interesting, if I'm doing something interesting that day. But I just like it better to just, I just enjoy my life. And I enjoy it whether or not you can witness it or not. You know, I witnessed it. And it felt so good too, it felt good. I mean, at first it was a little weird for me, like when I first like stopped posting on Instagram, but it felt so good to like, just take control and have discipline, you know, especially with something like that, especially with something so addictive like social media, like it's a highly addictive thing. I mean, you can literally sit on your phone all day and just be scrolling, 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 scrolling. You know what I mean? But I like to enjoy life even like now another thing that i tend to do because i find it important to let go of my phone because i've done that i told you i like to exchange one for the other right so if i have one habit i create a new habit to help with that old habit one of the things that i really enjoy doing is reading i like to read a lot of self-help books i like to read a lot of spiritual books like i told you guys i'm very into my spirituality I may get into that in future videos if you guys are into it, you know, we can do some things. I definitely did like a quick little meditation on Instagram a couple of months ago, but um really get into the really getting into that. That would be pretty fun for me to do with you guys, but but yeah, just like reading a lot, educating myself like I mean, they tell you to read like 30 minutes a day, but I read until I just like I'm uninterested. And I'm like a weird person too because when I read, I don't read books front to back. I believe, and I know you guys are probably gonna think I'm weird, I believe that my books talk to me. I promise you guys, every time, every single time, it happens every time, I'll open up the book and it'll open up to something that I need to know. It And it happens every time, you guys, I kid you not. It'll open up to a chapter of something that I really, really needed to hear and I feel like it intuitively called me to that page so that I can get this information at this time. I don't believe in coincidences. I just believe in alignment and frequencies. And like I told you, I read a lot of self-help books. So a lot of my books are not like storytelling where you need to read the beginning to the end. I don't read those kind of books. My books, you can really pick up on any chapter and get some information out of it. Another thing that I like to do is paint. I like to paint different canvases, even if it's ugly. I don't even care if it's ugly. If you guys were on my Instagram, actually, not too long ago, I did post a video of, um, I did post like me and my sister having like a sip and paint and we painted and stuff at the crib and it was really enjoyable. I really enjoyed doing a sip and paint with my sister. And um, I also like to color. I have coloring books, literally. I'll show you guys right now. I have a coloring book and crayons right here. <laughs> like, I am like a big kid, you guys. So these are my crayons, okay? At the beginning of like July, me and my family had like a get together or whatever. And I remember talking about the fact that like I like to color. 
And my sister was like, why do you want to do that? That's for like mentally ill people. And I'm like, what? My mom had a checker. Like, check, yeah, check her, bro. She's lost in the sauce. I don't know what's going on with her, but she doesn't know. Coloring is very great for you. Like, it, especially um, as adults, my mom is actually a therapist. I don't think I ever talked to you guys about that. But she actually has a lot of her patients color. You know, it's very therapeutic to do. But this is one of my coloring books. It's like a My Little Pony coloring book. And I want to say, I think I probably got this from like Five Below or something like that. Or maybe the 99 Sister. I don't know, girl. But I got my crayons and my coloring book. And this is something that I like to do to just like escape from my phone. And if I'm not doing that, I like to get out into nature. Go to like a really nice park or something with my dog. And just like enjoy the vibes. Do some sun gazing. I'm just a different kind of person. Like I love just like doing fun things that are just like... Uh, stimulating to the mind in my last vlog actually I did show you guys that I went and I uh, I did show you guys that I went to five below and I bought a bunch of books these books are not from five below one of them is borrowed one of them was a suggestion from my sister that I bought from Amazon so the first book that is actually borrowed is this one this book is actually my mom's book and it's pretty old let me see when this book was published this book specifically was uh, printed September of 1999 Y'all see that? September 1999. That's my birth month, by the way, September. Shout out to all my Virgos. But yeah, so this book is called The Power of Now, and it's by Eckhart Tolle. And hopefully I pronounce his name correctly, but this book has been a life changer. It's all about just focusing on this moment right now. I don't know if she's gonna allow me to keep it or not, but it means a little bit more to me because it belonged to her first. It has like some of her markings in here. Like she's highlighted a couple of things, you know? So I like that about it. You know, it just lets me know like, oh, this is something that my mom um, read and this is the information that she received and now it's being passed down to me, so you know pass down something valuable to somebody and this is a book that I like to read if you're not really into reading they also have audio books that you can listen to even even on YouTube you can go to YouTube and you can look up the power of now audio book and you can listen to somebody who's reading this book this one is especially for my black women out there if you are a black woman you need this book especially if you're into spirituality this book is called sacred woman this is what it looks like, Sacred Woman. And this is this book is written by Queen Afuya. You see her name right there. She actually has a lot of interviews and stuff on YouTube. She did an interview with The Breakfast Club, which I was like very surprised by. I was like, what, she was on The Breakfast Club? But yeah, she did um, an interview with The Breakfast Club. But this book right here is a handbook to your essence. I mean, this talks about our ancestors, a guide to healing the feminine body, mind, and spirit. Um, there's definitely a lot that I have learned from this. I also have a notebook that I use when I read my books because like I said, I read for knowledge. Okay. I don't read just for entertainment. I read for knowledge. So I have this book. This is called my spiritual girl. This is my spiritual girl book. I mean, here, I mean, I have so many different things that I have written from books. This is only like when I read a book, this is what I'll, um, I'll come in here and I'll write some stuff. I'm going to show y'all. So this is a perfect example. So you see on this side, I have the power of now at Carto. And these are like things that I wrote that I learned from the book. You see how my mom like wrote in the book? I just have a notebook that I write in. And then Spiritual Woman by Queen of Fulia. This is stuff that I learned from her. So yeah, these are like books that I'm reading. And this is just like information that I got. Um, from these books, like right here, it says meditate during the hours of four through 6 a.m. Um, it says at this hour, your melanin is pouring out and you hear things you can't hear during the day. You receive visions that you couldn't see later on and you connect with your dreams and receive messages at this hour of Nebthet. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's N it's N E B T H E T Nebthet. We drink pure water, herbal tea, such as red raspberry, um, and that's for your root chakra. So when you eat things, when you wear certain colors, it, it you know, it affects your different chakras. So if you want to focus on your womb, you want to, you know, focus on red things. So eat like strawberries, red bell peppers, that kind of vibe, right? But um, the power of now, one of the things I learned from here, um, just to give you, I just want to give you guys something so you guys can have a reason to want to get the books. But if I just say like, oh, you should get this book. You're like, okay, why? For what? I don't even like to read, so no, I'm not going to do it. But anyway, let me read this little excerpt that I wrote out. It says, um, the power of now, nothing exists outside of the now. Nothing ever happened in the past. It happened in the now. 
Nothing will ever happen in the future. It'll only happen in the now. The past is a memory trace stored in the mind of a former now. The future is an imagined now stored in the mind as a projection of the mind, right? The past and the future have no reality of their own, just as a moon has no light of its own, but can only reflect the light of the sun. In other words, their reality is borrowed from the now. So that was just like a quick little something um, that I wrote that wrote from this book, The Power of Now. That's this. Um, and that that right there just was like, wow. When I read that, I was like, oh my God, I have to, I have to write this down. But that's what I mean when I say I open up the book and the book talks to me. I just opened up the book and started reading and found this in there. So I don't read books front to back. I just allow the book to talk to me and I just read the book. Now that may mean that I never really complete the whole book, but that also means that I have opportunity to always come back to it and read it if I want to read it again. And just like when you watch a movie, when you watch it the second time, you catch things that you didn't the first time. So, but um, those are some of the things that I have done with my life, you guys. Those are some of the things that have been going on with me. Yeah, I had a breakup with my ex. I lost a close friend of mine to lupus i also ended up ending a long-term friendship uh i was looking for new apartments what else and um i was making a lot of personal changes to myself and my spirituality and making room for new things so hopefully this video inspired somebody out there to let go of their past habits places issues with people i mean even certain situations sometimes you got to let go of that grudge whatever that might be Anyway, I'm just dragging this on. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you all, both new and returning. And I hope to see all of you beautiful people in my next one. Bye.